I was actually just thinking about changing my story because of Meg. Uh, so I'd like to start off with um, my brush of fame, what the story I'd really like to tell is how I met Eileen Joyce, since she's in charge. It's not famous, you guys. Just kidding. No, but it is a great story. Um, so I had a couple, and I was having a tough time trying to decide. The easy thing for me would be to tell a story about meeting Michael J. Fox, because I do a lot of work with Parkinson's. Um, but I'm going to go with the time I met Teddy Kennedy. Um, I was working in Hanover, Pennsylvania, working for the Evening Sun. I was a brand new reporter right out of school. I'd actually been fired from my first job, so I had very little self-confidence. And, uh, and, and if you've ever met me, if you've ever been interviewed by me, uh, secret, I never prepared for it. I was one of those like, you know, I'm just going to walk in, I'm going to try to figure it out, I'm going to go from there. Um, I would like to hear what you want to say and I want to just, you know, continue on that conversation. So I was told I was going to meet Teddy Kennedy. He was going to be in Gettysburg. I was working at the Hand Reading Sun. Uh, he was stumping for, and I'm probably going to cut on this, I think it was Hillary, it might have been Obama. It was when they were still against each other in the primary several years ago. And... Uh, I called my parents and I said, I'm going to meet Teddy Kennedy. And my dad goes, whatever you do, do not get in a car with him and do not go across a bridge. <laughs> and I went, I don't even really know what you're talking about, Dad. Like, why the hell would I get in a car with Teddy Kennedy? I don't even know the man. I mean, that also sounds like stranger danger. And then I Googled it and was like, holy shit, don't get in a car with Teddy Kennedy. <laughs> right? So, in the first time in my life... I actually prepared for this interview. Googled all these things. It was like back in the day when, when like shit actually got really kind of mean between Hillary and Obama. Like they were just kind of going after each other to kind of, you know, narrow the field. So I, you know, I was ready. I had this like list of questions. I go into this like ghetto fabulous house in Gettysburg. Um, it was packed full of people, you couldn't really move around, but they knew I was there, they knew why I was there, I was like ready, I had my notebook, I was good, I was ready to go, I would prepared, which was so unlike me. And um, they are like, oh, he's ready to see you now. I'm like, oh, okay, great. So I walk in the room with a reporter from the Gettysburg Times, who I will not name, and uh, I continue to ask all my questions, and they involved, you know, the state of elections these days and how this seemed to get actually really personal and negative and that was something that at least I hadn't seen uh, very recently. Um, there were a lot of questions about the economy and Pennsylvania and jobs and look at me being informed about politics and yeah. And uh, I realized, um, I was gonna say halfway through but it was pretty apparent very clearly that he was not focused on a damn thing I had to say because he was staring at my breasts. <laughs> Did I also forget to mention that his wife was in the room sitting right next to him trying to like tap him and get him to realize that I'm answering questions, which he was not answering. Uh, so it, it kind of wrapped up and it, he didn't really answer many of the questions. The Gettysburg Times reporter then asked his only question, uh, where are you going from here? And I, you know, flabbergasted, walked out of the room, walked down the stairs, and then watched as he actually almost stumbled down the stairs onto our photographer, um, which was really horrifying uh, for me at the time, sitting on the outside. Um, and this is why I didn't want to tell the story, because the segue then is that uh, he then died two weeks later. So it was a little, was a little weird. Uh, don't believe what people say, I was not responsible. Uh, that same summer, I met Sarah Palin, uh, and I actually stalked her through all of Gettysburg. I mean, I was being a journalist. Uh, and I followed her, I was at a wine festival and I heard that she was in town, so I followed her. Uh, they said she was at the battlefield. I was like, you know, bouncing around the battlefield. They said she was at a Walmart. I went to a Walmart. Went everywhere until I found her. When I actually found her outside of this hotel, this was a big couple of weeks for me, let me just tell you. Uh, she is real small. I mean, I'm a giant. I mean, obviously, Eileen had to raise the, I'm six feet tall. Uh, she's like real small. And uh, 
she was talking, there were all these reporters and they were all from everywhere and like, you know, they were just on this bus following her everywhere she has to be. And I'm sitting there going like, hi, I'm from the hand reading sun. How are you? Do you like Gettysburg? Is it fun? Are you having a really good time here? Uh, and all she wanted to do was tell us to read her book. <laughs> to which I responded, I think if I wanted to read your book, I would have bought it. Would you like to actually tell me something about it? Uh, and then they didn't want to talk to me anymore. But that was my summer of two meetings of probably the most famous people that I, I've met in my life that I relatively prepared for and or stalked uh, in a not so, not so great way. But that's me, so if you've met me. <laughs>